Hello everyone, I am Jaden Mantero from BABM10 and today I am going to be talking about the impact of globalization on sustainable and ethical business practices. Globalization is a gradual evolution of industries as well as manufacturing processes. Industrialization started mostly around the late 1800s to 1900s where most countries started developing their industries, their manufacturing process started advancing, their technology started developing. All this led to the industrial revolution. Now these growing industries meant that countries could now export their trade, export all the goods that they are producing, which led to opening up of trade barriers as well as taxation on those trades. This process is known as globalization. Globalization and industrialization. Government and industrialists saw to it that they would take full advantage of this opportunity. They started overproducing their goods and this led to a high level of pollution. They started dumping all their waste into the ocean or releasing toxic chemicals in lakes and smaller water bodies as well as releasing harmful toxins into the air. Releasing all these things into the environment didn't lead to anything good. Marine life started dying and they still are today. There are about 100 million marine life that die every year just through our pollution. Many researchers and historians believe that the industrial revolution started around the late 18th century to early 19th century. These in, uh, revolutions mostly started in the West like USA and England. So after the industrial revolution took place, the overproduction led to overworking of employees. And this led the government to start imposing things such as labor laws, humanitarian rights and all these kinds of things because life expectancy reduced by a lot. The average life expectancy of a male working adult was 37 years old which isn't really a lot and seeing all these harmful gases and everything released into the air the government thought that they have to do something about it. The organization took a toll on millions of lives. People, uh, the people along with their families moved to the city in hopes of better employment, better wages, better life for their family. But all they were met with was deadly diseases, toxins, polluted water and polluted air, which reduced their life expectancy and hindered their lives in a big way. The main reason for industrialization was to enhance the country's economy and aid in the growth and development of the economy. It helped in the transition between the agricultural economy to a manufacturing economy. Industrialization led to a tremendous growth in terms of employment as well as income level. Industrialization helped us create and develop amenities that we enjoy today. It primarily took place in the 18th and 19th century in the East and then eventually spread out to the West. Employment fields flourished as it focused more on specialization and the specialization allowed for people to earn higher incomes. But everything comes at a cost and industrialization came as a cost of the environment. There were a large amount of problems that it created like depleting the ozone layer and over utilizations of natural resources. These issues created problems that affect the entire planet. The depletion of the ozone layer has caused so many problems. The depletion of the ozone layer is a serious concern for us as above the arctic there is a huge hole which is allowing unfiltered ultraviolet rays to enter the earth's atmosphere causing the earth's temperature to rise and the ice caps to melt. This is a big problem as the indigenous, indigenous wildlife of the area like polar bears, penguins and seals are losing their natural habitat and are forcing them forced to confine themselves to smaller habitats. Climate change is also causing various other problems like seasonal delays. This is an issue for farmers as they try to anticipate monsoons and plant their seeds accordingly. But due to unpredictable rains, tons of grains go to waste every year, restricting the amount of grains entering the market. Because of the lack of supply, poverty-stricken groups are unable to procure grains and suffer from malnutrition. This shows us that climate change not only affects the environment but also affects the life of common people in a significant way. To compare the ethical and sustainable policies of Canada and England, Canada has various large-scale programs that they have organized through an organization called Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. This organization was founded by 20 countries. The organization provides guidelines for all multinational organizations that operate out of Canada. 
they also make sure that all raw materials finished goods that enter the country are not from any high conflict areas or areas that practice unethical practices they also focus on factors such as human rights labor laws and keep a tight leash on corporations that have had a tumultuous history they've partnered with international finance corporations that scrutinizes the corporations on their financial accountability and offer financial support to corporations that are in need of financial support England's policies are more focused on conserving non-renewable sources of energy and developing renewable sources of energy. They have an organization called UKHSA which makes it which makes all decisions for the country's sustainable practices. England has strict legislations on environmental sustainability that all corporations operating out of England have to adhere to. They also promote recycling, reusing as well as guiding local governments to adopt and educate their citizens on waste segregation. England has several compliance audits that take place every year to make sure that companies are adhering to the guidelines of UK's environmental policies. To compare the two, Canada mainly focuses on large-scale operations that helping managing the sustainability of the country as a whole, whereas England focuses on educating its citizens on sustainable practices and proper waste management and but also has organizations in place to monitor the sustainable and ethical practices of the country as well as the companies within it. To summarize everything, globalization and industrialization have had a humongous effect on developing technologies as well as economies. But all of this came at a cost. That cost was our environment. It has never completely been able to recover from the damage that was dealt even centuries ago. But as uh, shown by Canada and England, countries are trying to be more sustainable, are trying to protect the environment from getting damaged even further, as well as even on a small scale trying to repair the damage that was done centuries ago. But I personally think that in Canada's case, they could work on in educating their citizens more on sustainable ways of waste disposal, as well as working in on renewable energy like solar panels for their houses whereas in England's case it would be more beneficial to them on the other hand England can improve on their waste disposal systems as most of their policies are more focused on releasing toxins into the air or into the ocean whereas waste disposal on their land is not monitored very heavily which is letting a lot of small industries dispose their waste everywhere if I could recommend one thing that the world could do is that to monitor smaller scale waste disposal. Is that smaller industries are disposing their waste wherever they can uh, find, maybe the small lands, lakes, landfills, anything. It, all this is adding up to a huge amount of unaccounted for waste, which is not showing up on the country because it's being done on such a small scale where no one's gonna, no one's going to notice until it's too late and it's going to have a mammoth effect on the environment as a whole. Thank you for listening. Please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel.